Good afternoon and welcome to the 2007 Macgrove Project Financial Results Presentation for the year ended 30 June 2020. This is James Powell speaking. Today's presentation will comprise of three sections. Firstly, an industry and harvest update, which will be presented by Scott Norville, National Manager of Macadamias. Then the FY20 financial results, which will be presented by Sandra Walton, Senior Funds Administrator. And finally, a conclusion coupled with a question and answer session. We encourage all attendees to ask any questions they may have of the presenters today. To do so, at any time throughout the presentation, you may type a question into the questions box on your screen. As indicated, we'll go through these at the end of the presentation. I'll now hand over to Scott to provide an industry and harvest update. Thank you, James, and welcome to everyone. We'll start with a quick look at the macadamia industry. Um, harvest conditions across all of the Australian growing regions have been favourable with the 2020 Australian crop announced recently at 45,000 tonnes of nut in shell at 10% moisture. This is a little over 1,500 tonne down on last season's crop, primarily as a result of the extended dry conditions. Uh, Australia is presently the world's second largest grower and our key export markets are Japan, USA and Europe. Like most businesses, COVID-19 has caused uncertainty and to some extent disruption within our industry. However, our processes were quick to adapt strong safety protocols and have to date avoided any stoppages. Markets overseas have experienced some change during this time, but unlike other tree nuts, volume and pricing of orders has remained strong. There was some downward pressure on pricing during the peak of the pandemic, but this was offset by a weaker Australian dollar. While customers are eating out less frequently, we have seen an increase in retail sales across Australia, USA and Europe. The reduction in global supply coupled with existing demand will likely result in low inventory levels leading into next season. This puts the Australian industry in a strong pricing position moving into next year. After a seasonally late start to harvest following last year's flowering, uh, favourable dry weather coupled with an increased harvesting capacity and reasonable quality saw the last of the project's product delivered to the processes on the 24th of August. Although the dry conditions during the crop period may have impacted the overall fruit size and lowered our kernel recovery, increased sophistication in the delivery of supplemental irrigation to the orchards has mitigated this effect and left us with our biggest crop to date. The timely finish to harvest has also allowed us to complete end of season work prior to flowering with the orchards pruned, compost spread and soil ameliorant supplied prior to nut set. We are presently coming to the end of a solid flowering and initial signs are for a strong nut set. On the previous slide, I discussed lower Australian industry yields due to the extended drought conditions uh, that we and other growing regions around the world have experienced over the last two seasons. We're constantly reviewing and evaluating new technologies to help us maximise water efficiency and therefore yield. After several years trialling irrigation scheduling tools, we are now ready to roll out volumetric sap flow measurement across the project's orchards, as well as giving an indication of tree water stress. These units provide a daily report of tree water use in litres, which can be compared real time to the applied water within our irrigation control system. The chart on this slide shows sap velocity, the green line, where you can see the tree transpiring and producing carbohydrates during the day. The green point is the individual tree's daily calculated water use and the blue point is the litres applied via the irrigation system. The difference between these points is used up by evaporation and soil loss, assuming that you don't overwater. In this chart, you can see the tree's water use increases as flowers reach stage three opening until the water applied matches the water used, putting the tree into mild water stretch, which was removed within 12 hours with a nighttime water 
and subsequent increase to daily irrigation events. This level of control will be an industry first and enables accurate tree control, not only to optimise yields, but to potentially control vigour and tree size. So it has been a very good result under trying conditions from the orchards and the staff this year. The 2020 crop has reached 928 tonne of nut in shell in total, or four tonne of nut in shell per hectare, up 25% from last season's result. Sound kernel recovery, that is to say saleable kernel, was slightly down on last year at 35.3%, which is below our target range of 36%. Reject kernel recovery was pleasingly low at 2%, down from 2.4% last year. Pricing has remained strong and at present the average farm gate price achieved by the project is $6.48 per kilo. Please note that this price is still subject to end of season adjustment. And while this has been a strong result under the conditions, we continue to focus on maximising canopy vigour, volume, sorry, and vigour as we look to grow the project's production to five tonne per hectare. I'll now hand you over to Sandra for the financial results. Thank you, Scott, and good afternoon, growers and advisors. As Scott mentioned, I will be taking you through the FY20 financial results. As you may recall from previous presentations, the macadamia harvest overlaps two financial years, and therefore proceeds in any given financial year are received from two crops. For example, the slide on the screen shows the FY20 distribution is made up of a portion of the proceeds of the 2019 crop and a portion of the 2020 crop. Now to the results. It is RFM's great pleasure to advise that growers of the 2007 Makarov project will receive a return of $2,342 per macro. As explained in the previous slide, two crops contributed to the result, being 70% of the proceeds of the 2019 crop and 37% of the proceeds of the 2020 crop. The crop proceeds added with other income, such as interest, provides total income of $9,489 per macro. Expenses for the period totaled $7,147 per macro. This is comprised of operating expenses and rent of $6,300 and fees and cost recovery of $800. This has given an FY20 result of $2,342 per macro, which is 29% higher than the FY19 return. To provide adequate working capital throughout the year, a prepayment of operating expenses has been retained, but is entirely offset by the credit for last year's prepayment. The return of $2,342 per mat growth is made from two components. A cash distribution of $1,629, which is paid to the growers' bank accounts, and refundable GST in the amount of $712 per mat growth. It is worthwhile reminding growers of the importance of registering for GST, as this forms a meaningful part of your return. The macro fund that you're a member of pays GST on your behalf, but the fund itself is unable to claim it back. The underlying holder of the mat growth must do this. I would also like to remind growers that RFM is not a licensed taxation agent and therefore we encourage growers to seek their own professional advice. Growers can expect their FY20 statements will be issued and payments will be made this week. Now to the cash flow matrix. The table in this slide has been included to provide growers with a potential range of returns under various price and yield assumptions. For example, 
Assuming a yield at the lower end of the range of four tonnes per hectare and a low price of $5.50 per kilo would give an indicative return of over $800 per mat growth whereas over $5,000 can be achieved with a high yield of five tonnes per hectare and a high price of $6.50 per kilo. I'll now hand you back to James Powell to take you through the conclusion and questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. In conclusion, the FY20 period reflects another good year for the macrove projects. The 2020 yield of four tonnes per hectare represents another increase for the orchard, specifically 25% compared to the 2019 crop. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Scott Norville and his team for these positive results. As described by Sandra, the FY20 cash distribution of $1,629 will be paid to investors this week and payment statements will also be posted this week to growers as well. This concludes the presentation component of today's webinar. We will now take questions from attendees on the line. By way of reminder, you can ask a question of the panel by typing it into the questions box you should be able to see on the right hand side of your screen. While we wait for any questions to come through, a reminder that at all, as always, please don't hesitate to contact RFM Investor Services should you have any questions regarding your investment throughout the year. I'll now pause for a moment while we wait for any questions to come through. We've got a few questions coming uh, through from growers at the moment. I do have a technical question on lease accounting standards, AASB 1.6 um, from a grower, and I will uh, get back to that grower with the specifics of that question. We have another question, which I'll hand over to Scott Norville, which is just to talk about the uh, potential future yield that may be achieved from the orchards. Scott, if you could if you could unmute your line and talk to that please. Thanks James. Um, so the trees are certainly of a mature age but we're still developing a mature canopy in volume and I keep saying the word but quite importantly vigour. Um, we certainly had set our sights at four tonne as the first point, and then our next aiming point is five tonne per hectare. Um, what is the long-term yield aim? I think it's hard to say, uh, and as increases in technology and knowledge about our product improve, um, the industry as a whole is seeing its average grow and the top performers um, certainly are increasing. A couple of years ago, four ton would have been the answer, five ton might be now, and I, I would hope and expect that, that we would go above five ton in the future, if that answers the question. Thank you, Scott. Um, we have another question in regards to the output. Output was up 25%, but gross returns seem to be down compared to last year. I might 
just start with a quick explanation on that point, Scott, and then um, hand over to you to add any additional comments. Um, in regards to the, the actual distribution amount, um, it was about 29% up on last year. Um, however, it's important to note, as Sandra outlined, because in any given financial year, you are receiving cash proceeds from two crops, you may um, indeed receive different proportions of those crop proceeds. It was 70 and 37% in FY20 as an example, but would have been different in the year prior. Um, so it's not always um, directly applicable to compare one year on the other, bearing in mind the difference in crop proceeds timing. Scott, did you have any um, additional information to add to that? Um, not particularly, James. I think we weren't overly happy with last year's yield and we have had a, uh, you have to be careful that you don't have a history of jumping as we have this year and not meeting the tree's nutritional requirements, which sees you take a slight hit in the following year. Um, we've certainly, are, we're aware of this crop early on and have adjusted the nutrition, um, but that might be not part of that question, sorry. No, I think that does sort of provide some additional uh, insight on the, the, the crop output um, part. So thank you, Scott. Um, we've got another question just in terms of how many more years does the, the fund continue? Um, so the initial lease uh, of the orchards by the project was for 21 years expiring in 2028. Um, however, the growers have options to renew for a further five and four years, taking it out um, an additional nine years from 2028. So we'll just pause for one more moment and I invite any additional questions to come through, should there be any. Uh, we've got another question through just in respect to the the phenology um, of the trees and specifically how long would macadamia trees continue to produce um, i think scott might add to this but um, the current school of thought is that macadamia trees can certainly produce longer than almond trees um, up to 50 years but but definitely a, a productive life of 30 years Scott, was there anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, so that's a, a lot of that's based on management, James, but there is certainly a commercial orchard just north of Bundaberg that's well past its mid 50s and still producing. Thank you. We also have one final question, um, and it's in respect to the profit in the, a quarterly profit result um, to September 20, compared to the profit result to um, September 19. I'm not quite sure the, the intent of the question. Um, the reason being is, of course, uh, the, the management of the orchard is, is focusing on the input costs um, for a particular crop period and harvest period, after which cash receipts will come into the fund. Um, but I will hand over to, to Scott if he, if he did have anything to, anything rather, to add to that answer. Thanks, James. Um, yeah, not primarily because of the seasonality of our crop and the variation in harvest, um, it's, it's actually difficult even annually, which we have to do, but quarterly becomes very hard to gauge. Um, so we, we're tracking our inputs, and but at this point in the year, as much as we've had a good flowering and the set does look good, we've still got the bees in the orchard 
And really, we're probably four months away from getting even a half reasonable prediction of next year's actual yield from those activities. Thanks, Scott. Um, I would also note that, of course, the fund prepares half-year accounts, which are made a, um, which would be available. Um, so for those investors that, that um, would want to review them, um, they may do so. I'd like to draw a conclusion to the, today's presentation. Um, there being no further questions, um, as noted, there is that one outstanding lease uh, application question, which we'll get back to that investor on. And um, I'd like to once again, congratulate Scott on the result, um, a, a very good result. And, um, and thank the investors for their participation today. Um, if you do have any additional questions, um, as I had mentioned earlier, but would like to reiterate, please don't hesitate to contact RFM um, at any time. And we would be um, more than pleased to help you in any way we can. Thank you and good afternoon.